Hi everybody. Uh, today I've got a really interesting thing that everybody has to know to share with everyone. And that is about vaccines. So COVID vaccines are everywhere now. It seems like every country, every university is making uh, vaccines. And it looks like uh, the big pharmaceutical companies, as usual, are leading the pack. Uh, everybody already knows that Pfizer, uh, also a maker of the Viagra pill, uh, has a vaccine that's more than 90% effective. And it is an expensive thing to make vaccines, but it is also extremely profitable. Just take a look at this. The United States government is going to pay $1.95 billion to Pfizer for 100 million doses of COVID-19, which, according to my understanding, will be given to the public, the American public, for free. Uh, of course, this is your the taxpayer dollars at work. No problem there. Uh, and this Pfizer is not the only company to receive funding from the US government. Let's see here. Moderna, another pharmaceutical company, will receive up to $1.5 billion to manufacture and deliver the vaccine doses to government designated locations across the country. Actually, that may not all go to all of... Oh, sorry. It appears to be allocated for the delivery of the vaccine, but not necessarily uh, for Moderna itself. There seems to be part of the project. Uh, and that also holds here for another pharmaceutical company, AstraZeneca, $1.2 billion here. The new US COVID-19 vaccines program, Operation Warp Speed. So vaccines are super expensive. Uh, and let me show, I mean, rather a lot of money is being put into uh, producing, researching, and delivering those vaccines. And I put together a little table just for everyone to uh, digest it a little more easily. So here we are. These are the uh, vaccines that I think uh, are worth taking a look at. So we have Pfizer. Uh, I even, you know, collected some information here. They're in their third phase. They have three phases to uh, clinical trials. First phase, I think, is with uh, is preclinical. Uh, I think they need to show it in like the lab environment that it works. Then phase two will be with animals and they have to show that it works on animals. And then phase three will be with actual human beings. And that's where uh, these are. Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca uh, are at phase three. And they all make use of the R mRNA technology. And this is really interesting. This is something I learned learn from uh, my A-level biology. So just to share with everyone. So when um, your DNA in your cell nucleus, you know, contains a lot of information. And when your DNA needs to be expressed, you know, all that information encoded needs to be brought into the cell to do things like, you know, make proteins, you know, make some chemicals, make some hormones. They need to be transcribed. Somebody needs to read your DNA. So like, this is the relevant paragraph and I'll take it out. I'll follow the instructions to make the chemicals and that will go into your body. Well, that is that information is carried by mRNA. mRNA is the messenger uh, string of your, uh, in this case, you know, ribonucleic acid. It's just a string of instructions, a copy from your DNA. So it's a partial copy. You take it out and then the cell follows those instructions to make what is necessary. So all these mRNA vaccines, what they do is they're going to deliver their fake instructions into your body so that your body, the cells in your body can follow those mRNA instructions, produce the relevant uh, proteins, which are actually going to be pieces of the uh, COVID-19 virus. So your immune system is then in, meant to recognize these as, oh, these are foreign, you know, I don't know what these are. So to attack them and get practice attacking uh, those fragments of protein. So if your immune system uh, encounters the virus thereafter, it knows what it is and will destroy it. So that's how these mRNA vaccines work. And you can see it's a very, very common uh, method here. Only AstraZeneca does it a little differently, and which my understanding is that they modify an existing virus that exists in the world uh, to make it look like COVID-19. So your body will then attack that 
virus, which isn't, you know, isn't as harmful. Uh, and then your body will also learn to recognize the enemy, right? And most of them come in two doses, uh, spaced, you know, a few, few weeks apart. You can see that over here. Pfizer, 21 days. Moderna, 28. Sanofi. Uh, Sanofi is a f the largest, I believe, is the f largest French pharmaceutical company, and they're doing it, you know, 21 days apart. And AstraZeneca, 30 days. So they, they're very, very similar in many, many ways. The studies are all very large. Uh, the ones in phase three, anyway, they're done, you know, uh, I believe uh, with populations in different countries. So it's not just all in one place. In order to make sure that it is as generally applicable, you know, it is as useful to as many different kinds of people as possible, uh, these trials also take place in different countries, which is, I think, easy to do right now because everybody wants to be involved in these. So no question there. Uh, there are some eff effectiveness claims. And I think this uh, bears a little bit of explanation. So when they say that uh, it is, you know, 95% effective, this has nothing to do with your uh, likelihood, you know, of, of being infected. I believe the way they do design these is that uh, if you give the vaccine to 100 people, uh, five people will actually end up catching the virus. So five people, uh, it did not work for them, or the dose was not sufficient for them, or maybe there were other factors in their body that, uh, despite the vaccine, still made them susceptible to catching COVID. So this is uh, not exactly strict, you know, uh, probability. So I just want to make that clear. Also, AstraZeneca, they had, you know, they gave a range. So you may think that, oh, uh, wow, it sounds like the AstraZeneca one's like way worse. Um, but the actual requirement laid out by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration is that it has to be better than 50%. So uh, if that's the baseline, then AstraZeneca actually, you know, exceeded it by a lot. So all of these vaccines are considered super, super effective. I think that's perfect. Now, one of the biggest concerns, I think, was that uh, it was said all of them have to be kept really cold and some of them like extremely cold. In the case of Pfizer, it needed to be like 70 degrees below zero Celsius. So it is very uncommon. Uh, I had to check it out a bit. It turns out that for a lot of clinics, this isn't very common either. Not a lot of clinics have uh, facilities you know, or uh, refrigerators that go that low. So this actually adds a lot to the cost, which I have already seen um, people talk about on Twitter, that this is very costly. And turns out that even in uh, developed industrialized countries, it is kind of difficult to get these, you know, kind of, uh, they call it the cold chain. So your logistics supply chain, you know, needs to be able to take care of this at the appropriate temperature from start to finish. And that's very difficult. And so it appears that, uh, this is an area of focus for Pfizer right now. They're really going to work hard to uh, overcome this. And actually, they're the only one who, it seems, actually require it. So it's a very delicate, very, very fragile thing, you know, the mRNA that they are using in their vaccine. Moderna actually has something interesting here. Turns out, you know, like so many things in the world, if you freeze it, you can keep it really long. Uh, minus 15 degrees, keep it half a year. Two to eight degrees, you know, 30 days. If you leave it on the table, maybe, you know, half a day. So it varies. That's the, for, the, for them. Uh, AstraZeneca says, hey, for us, you know, not a problem. Just keep it in the refrigerator two to eight degrees. We totally fine. But I couldn't actually find how long it would last. Uh, interesting one for Sanofi. Sanofi is actually uh, partnering with a company called Translate Bio. And the funny thing, uh, they initially said that, okay, you know, uh, hmm, let's see, Translate Bio's experimental COVID-19 shot is an animal test and it will, be have, it will have to be kept at minus 112 degrees. See, so Sanofi is partnering with uh, Translate Bio, oops, yeah. So that's their team. And this was in May, May 2020, when they claimed that you have to keep it at, at uh, yeah, 
working feverishly to develop a formulation that won't require minus 80 degrees Celsius. Yes. So back then, it ne needed to be refrigerated at extremely low temperatures. But uh, they have since updated that in November. Now, this month, uh, they have said it won't need to be super cooled and a normal refrigerator will suffice. Let's see, what else? They also, the CEO also said that... Oh, sorry, yeah, that's exactly what he said. It'll have to be refrigerated. So, good news there. It looks like a lot of progress is being made and people will have a lot of options. Uh, I don't... Some people have been already saying that, you know, it, some kinds of vaccines will be more appropriate in some kinds of uh, environments. And I can understand that because Moderna is touting, you know, 32 to 37 US dollars a pop for their vaccine. So that sounds really expensive. Um, Pfizer is saying $20, but they need to be, you know, chilled. And uh, AstraZeneca says three to four, but the... You know, effectiveness is said to be a lot, a lot lower. Not really a problem, right? Maybe, yeah. In indeed, in some cases, you know, where pl in places where, uh, it is really difficult to have good refrigeration and it is important to roll out in huge volume, maybe AstraZeneca will be preferred. I also highlighted these two, which are, uh, are closer to home. Arcturus, Arcturus is a company, uh, California based partnering with the Duke NUS uh, Medical School here in Singapore. They're in phase two. And they also have an mRNA vaccine that is supposed to be special because they only require one dose. And I'll show you what I mean here. I got it here. Straits Times. Here, Duke NUS and Arcturus Therapeutics. Could be effective as a single dose. Yes. And surprise, surprise, Thailand also has a vaccine in the works. Uh, I have not seen any updates since the, uh, a few months ago. Yeah. And if you want to, you know, take a look around and look for a little bit more, uh, to discover a little bit more about all these vaccines on your own, I found a really interesting website that everyone can go check out. Now I don't I cannot vouch for the accuracy of the information here, but I have clicked around and uh they link to the appropriate resources. So it looks like it will take you to a legitimate uh resource, you know, appropriate authority for each piece of information. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. Uh let's see. Sinovac. China and Brazil. No, let's look for something active. Ah, yes, the Russian Russian vaccine. So what do we have here? The Gamaleya Research Institute is responsible for it. If I click on it, I'll be taken to the relevant... Uh, inf yeah, looks like it. Here is the Gamaleya Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology with some information about their projects. Yes, that's very really good. And then here's a link to a Reuters article and so on. TASS is the uh, of Russian state news agency. So, you know, as those things go, that's pretty reliable. So you can spend it. Yeah, if you're interested, do check it out. It's covidvax.org for your information. Yep. Otherwise, yeah, I think uh, this gives you a good overview. You can figure out you know, or what the cost might be to an individual. I don't know, you know, will uh, our governments in our part of the world be paying the bill entirely or will it be subsidized? But I think this is a good starting point for us to understand what is going on and how these vaccines work. Looks like um, the most common mechanism is with the mRNA uh, vector, I call it the method. But there are a few others and they are all... I believe uh, discussed where here yeah have a look at this the New York Times coronavirus tracker and they talk about different kinds of technology at in use genetic vaccines and this will be the mRNA and there will be other things as well viral vector vaccines which is when you you know put 
use an actual virus but modified to resemble COVID and so on. There are a few others. Let me just show you real quick. Protein-based vaccines. I don't know how those work. And yeah, inactivated or attenuated coronavirus vaccine. So using the actual virus, but somehow weakened so that it cannot do harm to you. I think uh, in all cases, we're expecting, you know, things like people to experience the pain at the injection site, fatigue and aching muscles and joints. I think those are pretty common. Uh, holds for, I think, existing vaccines, not just the upcoming COVID vaccines. So that's really interesting. Uh, I hope that this gives you a nice little you know, overview, keep you up to date. And thank you for watching again. Take care. Bye-bye.